All over the world, there's a shift taking place as we turn off coal-fired power plants and replace them with more efficient, less polluting methods of energy generation. In fact, side note, Oregon's last coal-fired power plant shut down last week. Well done, Oregon. And in the same way, the auto industry is slowly coming around to the idea that in the not too distant future, running vehicles on gasoline or diesel will be unsustainable. And thus we're seeing more and more electric cars coming onto the market and edging ever closer to production. The reason for this transition is, I'll admit, mainly down to fear of missing out to companies like Tesla and Rivian, not to mention increasingly tough emission standards in most of the world. But whatever the reason, that switch to electric is finally happening. It started, for the most part, with small commuter cars, and then 10 years after it started in earnest, it's only now really starting to embrace larger vehicles like SUVs and pickup trucks. And while there is now more choice in the electric vehicle marketplace, more choice than we've ever seen before, those who prefer their vehicles a little older, be they classic cars or hot rods, are also wondering what would happen if they make their cars electric. High-end conversions have been around for a really long time. Simply put, for the last 40 years or more, if you had a classic car or a hot rod that you wanted to convert to electric and you had enough money to pay, there would be a company willing to make a competent conversion for you. But what if you are the kind of person who likes turning your own wrench or spanner? What if, for you, the pleasure of driving your classic car or hot rod includes the pleasure of knowing that you built, restored, or maintained it yourself? Traditionally, the answer, of course, for those wanting to carry out their own electric car conversion, and either not wanting or not being able to pay somebody else to do it for them, was to find off-the-shelf parts that they could combine into their car, building custom battery packs and motor mounts, creating their own wiring looms, and spending hours into the night mocking up things with cardboard boxes and string. Or, if you happened to own a really popular car that was often converted to electric, such as the erstwhile Volkswagen Bug, you could even sometimes buy a kit from specialist third-party companies that included everything you needed to carry out a bolt-in conversion in a matter of weekends, rather than months or years. These days, there are more options, thanks to a rise in the number of production electric and hybrid cars on the road, and the ingenuity of open-source communities dedicated to getting things like salvage motors, power electronics and battery packs working with converted vehicles. A lot of these project cards, just like our own Honda Insight EV conversion that we're currently working on, still rely on some ingenuity and technical skill on the part of the person carrying out the conversion, but for the most part they are a lot easier to do. In recent years, we've seen another option teased, crate motor drop-ins and conversion kits from mainstream automakers. Rather than the third-party kits of the past, these are sanctioned by mainstream automakers and use not salvage parts or off-the-shelf generic components, but the entire drivetrain battery pack and power electronics from modern, in-production electric cars. We've seen Jaguar postulate such a kit, and Volkswagen has teamed up with E-Classics in Germany to offer a kit for Volkswagen Beetles and Volkswagen Type 2 buses. In this case, they use the same power electronics from the last generation of Volkswagen E-Up. And today, General Motors unveiled its own product for GM conversion enthusiasts and hot rods, a crate motor package that it intends to start producing and selling next year called the Electric Connect and Cruise. It will be virtually showcased at this year's SEMA 360. But while the kit includes everything you might need to turn your gasoline classic or muscle car into a zero emission electric vehicle, it's frankly something I don't think will get hot rodders or classic car fans very excited. And I'm going to tell you why. First, let's look at the specifications for this thing. It is, to all intents and purposes, a Chevrolet Bolt EV without the car bed. GM has taken the Bolt's 200 horsepower, 150 kilowatt electric motor and paired it with the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack found in 2017 through 2019 model years of the Bolt EV. The battery capacity went up to 66 kilowatt hours for 2020 model year cars, and it throws in all of the other things you need to make the car work. It throws in a power inverter to turn the DC from the battery pack into AC to drive the motor, a DC to DC converter, to ensure that the car's original 12 volt systems can operate as designed, and all of the necessary wiring harnesses and computer systems needed to make the car work as well as the water pumps and controllers for the Bolt EV's active thermal management system. 
Also included, of course, is charging circuitry for the battery pack, an electric power steering kit, electric vacuum pumps for the brakes, and even a microcontroller circuit to drive stock gauges on older internal combustion engine vehicle instrument panels. So far, so good, right? Well, yes, but then if you look at the Chevrolet K5 Blazer E that has been built for SEMA 360 as a way to showcase the technology in situ, a 1977 K5 Chevy Blazer, you might have a different idea. Because it's a little compromised. It leaves me, and I suspect many classic car and hot rod fans, cold. Not because of the technology put inside, but because of what feels like a complete lack of common sense about just how a conversion could and should be carried out. Now, don't get me wrong, the Blazer is a fun conversion candidate and it certainly has the space to accommodate a battery pack. Originally, the K5 Blazer came with a 400 cubic inch or 6.5 litre V8 engine. In its place now, this K5 Blazer E has the much more compact bolt motor, which is not only smaller, but actually is more powerful. Yes, despite its displacement, the stock V8 and the Blazer only managed 175 horsepower. This bolt motor in the case is paired with a four-speed electronically controlled gearbox, which drives the all-wheel drive system of the original car through its original transfer box and prop shafts. But my beef comes in the way in which the battery pack has been handled. Rather than come up with a way to mount the battery pack out of the way, GM's performance team have literally plonked the Bolt's battery pack, casing et al, into the rear of the K5 Blazer where the load area would be in the original vehicle. I say plonked, but maybe that's a little unfair. It is bolted down to the floor and it does look secure. The cable routing is neat and tidy and the cooling loop for the battery cooling system is nicely managed. It's neat. It's tidy. From an engineering perspective, it's fine. But from an aesthetic point of view, frankly, I think it's the worst possible thing I can imagine for any originally V8 powered classic car. Sure, this conversion is complete, and it's a drop-in replacement for any V8-powered Chevy or sibling brand vehicle of a similar age. It even has regenerative braking. I'm guessing it has rapid charging. But it also takes up the entire rear of the vehicle with the battery. And those high-voltage cables, they're in there, in the cabin, seemingly within reach of anyone who fancies a tug. And it forgets that while many classic cars are trailer queens which are never driven anywhere except in nice weather and maybe around classic car rallies, some classics are still used and loved by their owners, like the Chevrolet E10 electric pickup showcase last year for SEMA, which again was based on a Bolt EV drivetrain and battery pack, and was apparently part of the development process into bringing the Connect and Cruise kit together, the K5 Blazer E is a conversion that removes all practicality from the original vehicle. Don't get me wrong, there is some joy in being able to see the parts of the conversion on display, especially if it's combined with a really impressive performance. In much the same way that engine blocks are sometimes polished on hot rods and trailer queens, so too could a battery pack on display give you some nice aesthetic to look at, especially to show what's powering the thing that just wiped the floor with whoever you were quarter-miling against. But at the same point, the battery case from the Bolt isn't really a piece of art to look at. It was designed to fit underneath the car, not sit there on display. Maybe that is the seat of my frustration. Maybe it could also be fixed with a false floor above the battery. But personally, I don't get it. From an engineering point of view, I can totally understand why the battery pack was kept whole like this. Battery cooling is possible if the battery pack is kept in its original form in a way that's a lot harder to do if it isn't. And because it's in one piece, you can replace the battery pack far more easily. And as I'm guessing we all know by now, battery packs that have active thermal cooling have a much longer life and have a better thermal stability over time than ones that don't. But for a conversion project, well, really the battery pack needs to be split up to make it more easily movable and to make it easier to put it into places where it's not going to be taking up unnecessary space. Like, you know, putting some of it in the engine bay with all of the space that's no longer taken up by a massive V8 engine and massive air filter. And to be fair, GM has said in its announcement of the V8 E-Crate project that it is investigating the possibility of developing other battery configurations to use alongside a crated motor. 
GM says that when its Ultium battery system is in production, it could offer Ultium-based crate systems. And because Ultium is designed in a modular way, with each module having its own wireless battery management system and closed thermal management system, it could actually mean that we'll see more practical kits in the near future. For now though, I love the concept of using contemporary technology from in-production cars in EV conversions, especially as it lowers the point of entry and means parts are easier to find. Although I'm still expecting a kit like this to be 15 to 20,000 US dollars or more. But next time, let's find a more creative way to hide the battery, eh? I mean, in the case of this car, the K5 Blazer, you could have a twin motor setup with new front and rear axles with electric motors. There would be no prop shaft or transfer box, and that would leave you a place to sling the battery underneath. I mean, that would be more fun, I'd wager. What say you? That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.